Good morning, everybody. Crafting Journey here, that Journey Chick on Instagram. Welcome to the show. It's June 1st. Today is the first day of our Crafters 90 Day Step Challenge. Now, if you have not heard from any of your team captains, let me know. I'll put you in touch with them. Um, I have not heard from a couple of people on my team. I have emailed them. So uh, please reach out to me. I want to put you into our messenger group where we're all giving each other words of encouragement. I got my watch on today, yes, with the uh, Alice in Wonderland watch face to go with the Year of Alice theme. Got my copy. Oh, I, I put, it was on this little sticky pad, these little sticky pads that we use and I couldn't get it, couldn't get my coffee cup up. I'm spilling things everywhere. So now you're going to ask me, have you gone for a walk yet today? No, I have not. <laughs> but I plan to do it in the early evening. Um, yeah. Uh, am I procrastinating? Yeah, I am. But that's me. I, I do everything at the last minute. Yes. So this is my latest new hat. This is made out of Ferris wheel yarn. I just love Ferris wheel yarn. It's just, it's a light four weight and it's, it just lays really pretty in a floppy, um, in a floppy hat. And it's such a cute little pattern. So, and I like the way the colors turned out. Yes, and I finished my painting. You guys wanna see the whole thing? All right, let's go get it. All right, here it is. Here it is in its entire way. Well, you can't see the whole thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's huge, guys. It's huge. There's, uh, oh my word. Let's get it closer to the camera. Let's see if we can get the whole thing in here. I don't know. There we go. That's, I think we can see it all. Can we see it all? There. Isn't that beautiful? I love the colors of the Cheshire Cat. Um, there's a little, where, where, whoops, right here, Absalom. There's a little worm right there. Cheshire Cat with his top hat, really pretty, sparkly. Um, I love the fairy door that's all the way down in the corner down there. Down here, see the fairy door? This is beautiful. This is by Hannah Lynn. It's offered by Diamond Art Club. You'd probably have to put yourself on the, you know, notification for when it comes back in stock. But look, it's so pretty. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna see if I can find a frame for it. If not, it's gonna get pinned up on the Alice wall as is, but man, it's heavy. It's really heavy because uh, it's a lot of diamonds. Lots and lots of diamonds. Okay, so what I thought I'd do today during the show is my least favorite part of diamond painting. And that is kidding up or kidding down. I don't mind kidding up, but kidding down, ugh. So I know I did a poll about what painting I would do next, but guys, my Sherry Baldy should be here today, and I really want to do that one. So I'm sort of procrastinating. It's, uh, my my mail says that it's, you know, the tracking says it's coming today. Um, so I'm going to kit that up this afternoon when it comes, do an unboxing, and then tomorrow morning you'll get to see that on the show. But I, the poll was a tie anyway. <laughs> there was The votes were even between um, the... Diamond Art Club, JoJo's Arts, Alice in Wonderland, and between the Craftably, um, Alice Van Gogh. So the, it was a dead tie anyway. So I'm going to preempt it and do the Sherry Baldy, Alice. It's so cute. It's part of her Bestie series. Yeah. It's adorable. Now, I, generally, I save diamonds, but there really doesn't look like there's enough to save. Diamond Art Club gives you just enough diamonds. Seriously, just enough. Um, I put them, I put my leftovers in this little jar that my sister made for me a couple of years ago. Isn't it beautiful? 
um, until it fills up and then I put it in a different container. So um, let's do what national day it is. It is national pen pal day. Oh my gosh. Did you guys ever have a pen pal growing up? You know, people still do that. People still do pen pals. Um, there's an, actually a couple of websites where you can go. One is called Post Crossing. And then there's a worldwide snail mail pen pal group on Facebook. Check that out if you're interested in getting a pen pal. It's, you know, it's, it's fun to write. We don't do it often enough. We like that instant gratification of, you know, sending out your message and waiting for the reply, the instant reply, you know, and I didn't know people still did pen palling. I think it would be fun to get a pen pal. I might try it. You know, this way you can meet people all over the world. If there's a language barrier, you learn their language eventually, right? So, um, growing up, I had a pen pal. My, she was actually my aunt's aunt by marriage, you know, so my mother's brother's wife's sister. <laughs> But we were about the same age. She was a little bit older than I was. And um, so we started, she lived in, um, we both lived in Florida, but different parts of Florida. So during our teenage years, we would write back and forth. And um, we're still friends to this day because like she's a family member. So I, I would see her at, at family functions and stuff. Um, she still lives in Gainesville, she's, you know, grown a couple of daughters. She's in real estate, done very, very well. Um, but, you know, we were pen pals growing up. And it was fun to write the letter, put it in the mail, and then wait for the reply, you know? it. And I, I do, like I said, I think it would be fun to do that again, you know? So, you know, how to celebrate National Pen Pal Day? Like, go on one of those sites and see if you can find a pen pal. Now, be careful, because we know there's, like, catfishers out. Like, don't look for the love of your life on the on the group you know um you know just someone to be friends with so yeah <laughs> national pin pal day did anybody ever did you guys have pin pals you still have a pin pal because that would be fun i really do think it would be fun to have a pin pal i have so many friends now on youtube and messenger Facebook, my God, I need more friends, right? Well, I think you can never have too many friends. So let's talk about Judge, Jury, and Journey. So the Law and Crime Network, I could not, um, it, they weren't, you know, I wrote to them and said, are you covering a new trial today? And they did not answer me. I got a thumbs up. I don't know what that means. But, you know, they're covering the Durst trial on their main channel. I don't know what they're doing on the second channel. Um, I'll see if I can figure that out today. But what I did was I went through the playlist and picked out an older trial. Okay, this is the trial of Jacob Kayer, C-A-Y-E-R. This actually happened in Brown County, um, same same place as uh, as we saw the Prokopovitz trial. So I'm getting used to the Minnesota accent, you know. And Jacob Kerr is on trial for the murder of Sabrina Teague and her mother, and the attempted murder of Joel Kennedy. That was Sabrina's. Sabrina's boyfriend. During the opening statements, um, we hear, sort, you know, the summation of what the evidence is going to show by the prosecution. They don't go real deep into into it. And I'm sorry, the laundry is spinning in the background. It's almost done. I apologize. But um, from the defense's opening statement, we find out that their client is claiming uh, insanity. Um, and what they what they call that uh, in the state of Minnesota is that he's suffering from a mental disease or defect, and that's why he committed a murder. That's the defense. It's a legitimate defense to murder. 
that should be interesting and we do find out that he plans to take the stand yeah okay this is really going to be a good one um, and it's a short trial so the first thing we uh, the judge says to the jury um, he, she talks about she explains that this trial is going to be done in two phases the first phase is you hear the evidence um, you're just you listen to the evidence and your only job, the jury's only job is to ascertain whether he committed these acts, whether he's guilty of the acts that he's charged with. Um, and then in the second phase of the trial, um, the jury will get to decide whether he's suffering from this mental defect, whether, uh, you know, so if they find him not guilty of committing the offenses, then you don't get the, you don't have a second phase because you don't have to move on to the insanity uh, portion of the trial. So, I, and I've never covered a trial quite like this. So this should be interesting. So the first uh, piece of evidence that we hear is the 911 tapes from that day. Um, the first there's two phone calls to 911. The first one is a hang up, but you, for probably 10 or 15 seconds, you can hear someone heavily breathing, like, you know, and the operator is trying to get them to say, you know, say something and they don't say anything. So, um, and then there's a hang up. So they try to call the person back and they get a voicemail. So, um, then they get another call and it is Joel Kennedy calling. Um, and he says, they're trying to kill, um, his exact quote is, they've tried to kill my family. Um, so she, she, she's like, who? And he's like, Jacob. And he said he was stabbed, he's bleeding out, he's hiding in the bathroom. Um, that he's that the guy has stabbed his girlfriend and her mother um he tells you know so the operator keeps him talking because now he explains that he has been stabbed in the arm and that he's putting pressure on it with a blanket and that he's sitting in the bathroom he's locked himself in the bathroom um so she's keeping him on the line until the police can get there and it takes the police a little while because they have to set up a perimeter, um, you know, because they don't know if this guy's still around or or not. Um, so they, she keeps him on the line. Plus, you know, she's worried, you know, that he might pass out or something. And because uh, he says he's bleeding very heavily. And at one point he looks at the wound and she, he's like, oh my God. And she's like, what's wrong? And he goes, I just looked at the, the wound. And she's like, don't do that. <laughs> Keep pressure on it. Um, it's not funny. So he, she says, well, where's your girlfriend? She's, he says, I don't know. She, she was fighting him off in the garage and I, I ran and hid into the bathroom. Um, and then he says, well, where's the mom? And he says, she's in the front, front bath, front, she's in the front bathroom, in the bathtub. <sighs> yeah, so, um, so they get, the police get there, they take him off uh, to the hospital. He ends up having surgery. The, the, he was cut so bad in the arm that it went through all the, the knife went all the way through his arm and into his chest and pierced his chest. But uh, the chest just required stitches. It, it was superficial. Well, thank God, right? Um, so then he, he, this Joel Kennedy takes the stand. Uh, and I'm not entirely impressed with this guy. He, he's, tw he's 26 years old now. Um, and at the time he was 22. So I guess it took four years to get this guy to trial. Um, so he explains that he met Sabrina Teague online um, on one of these dating apps and that they became fast girlfriend and boyfriend um, and that he ends up moving in there. Now this, the, this event occurred on June 17th, June 7th, 2016. So now, um, you know, 
four years later, we're in 2020, and this case is getting tried. So this is a trial from last year. Everybody's wearing their masks. There's plexiglass everywhere. I don't know why it took them four years to get to this get get this guy to trial, but um, so he uh, explains that he was living there with his girlfriend and her mother, and uh, he works at Burger King, and he does a little bit of everything at Burger King, whatever they need him to do. He um, uh, around noonish, uh, you know, he doesn't have a car. What a lovely son-in-law. This mother must have been thrilled. She brings her boyfriend, who has no job at the time he moved in, gets a job at Burger King, <laughs> doesn't have a car. <laughs> oh, she must have been so proud. Anyway, so I digress. Um, he's scheduled to work from 1 till about 9 o'clock that night. But um, Sabrina has to drive him to work. Uh, so she, and she works at Perkins. So she takes him to work. And I don't know if she had to work that day or not. Um, it's not clear what she was doing that day. Um, so he ends up getting off early at 7.30. So Sabrina comes and picks him up and takes him home. They go home. They enter the house through the garage. Um, they didn't notice anything untoward, you know, in the driveway. The mother's car was there. Um, they go, in, they get into the house through the, uh, they go into the house through the garage door into the kitchen. Um, and just as they're, just after you enter into the kitchen, there's a laundry room door just to the right, um, of the garage door. So they're, they're standing in the kitchen and Sabrina notices that there's water running in the downstairs bathroom, like the shower's running. So, which is just on the other side of the kitchen. So she walks over there and she screams, oh my God, mom. Um, and just as she does that, this Jacob Kayer comes out of that laundry room with a knife and he goes after Sabrina, um, stabs her and then comes after uh, Joel. Um, so he stabs Joel in the arm and Joel falls to the ground and is, you know, fighting him off, um, you know, kicking and punching. And so the guy leaves Joel and goes back over to the girlfriend. So now he, he testified that he had only met this guy one time before. So at this point in time, you know, in the house, he doesn't really recognize him. He, he doesn't realize who this is. And this was her ex-boyfriend. So when he got off of him and goes back to the girlfriend, Joel jumps up and goes into the garage to get a shovel to hit him with. So Sabrina and the boyfriend, or the ex-boyfriend, are tussling. Jacob, they're tussling around, and and Sabrina's trying to get to, to follow uh, Joel into the garage. So they're fighting their way into the garage. Joel gets the shovel, hits this guy over the head, then runs into the house, um, runs into the mother's bedroom upstairs, locks the bedroom door, then goes into her bathroom and locks himself in the bathroom. Um, now, he doesn't know, like, the last thing he knows is that Sabrina is in the garage fighting this guy off. That's the last thing he knows. So, I'm just seeing if I left anything out. He said it looked like a, a large kitchen knife. Uh, Sabrina, at, you know, was trying to call 911, and... Uh, Jacob snatched the phone out of her hand. He took her phone. So she didn't call 911. That might have been the hang-up call. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that was his testimony. He had, um, they said, he's, 
He had a severed artery and and severed tendons, so he had to go to surgery. Oh, can you imagine the recovery time for that? Oh, poor guy. Wow. Um, then they put on the stand a close friend of the mother's, and she describes how that that day they had gone out for dinner. Um, you know, it was a, a cancer survivor dinner, and it was over by like 7.30. So... Um, at that point, the mother, she heads home, and that's the last time her best friend ever sees the mother. So that testimony was kind of short and sweet. Then we get the canine officer on the stand. And his dog, Pal. It's so cute. I love that name, Pal. So the canine officer... Uh, responds to, uh, to the scene and his dog is trained to track. His dog is not trained on sniffing out narcotics. His dog is trained to track people. So they secure the perimeter of the home and um, before going into it, they um, he's, he's walking the perimeter with his dog and um, his dog picks up a scent in the backyard and uh, when he does, he calls for backup officers. He says he doesn't go into the woods alone. He'll he'll bring an officer to stand on either side of him. So he uh, he goes into the woods a little ways, and clearly the dog is tracking something. And at at some point, he does what he calls lets him off the leash. Is lets him track off leash. Uh, I guess they do better that way. So he takes him off the leash, and he all of a sudden. <laughs> He hears screaming, <laughs> and um, so they find the dog. The dog has bitten Jacob. They find Jacob hiding in the woods, and this is um, in the woods north of the home. Um, he's hiding back there, and the dog has, uh, you know, as he's trained to do to subdue the 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 person. He, he's bitten him in the arm or in the arm or the leg. I forget one or the other. It might have been the arm. Um, so they take Jacob into custody. So at this point in the evidence, we still don't know what has happened to Sabrina um, or the mother. Um, oh, no, we do know what happened to the mother because the, the canine officer said he went into the home, um, found the mother in the bathroom, called EMS in to check on her. Uh, the EMS people came in and said she we can't resuscitate her she's too far gone so he escorts them out because it's a crime scene he doesn't want to contaminate it um, so the mother is deceased in the bathtub um, they still haven't found Sabrina so that is where we're leaving off for today interesting case right um, yeah so, you know, they do uh, get the guy out of the bathroom and get him, like, get him to the hospital so he can have his surgery, um, the Kennedy guy. Okay, moving on. Uh, look, I got one whole uh, container. <laughs> I still have one more whole container of drills. <laughs> oh, the fun continues. You know what I don't like is because it's the, these diamond art club stickers. You have to, they don't peel off. They, you have to take your fingernails and, and peel them off. Um, so today we're going to hear about I'm seeing, I'm trying to see who's taking the stand today. Oh, the medical examiner. Yeah. Okay. We're going to hear from the medical examiner today. The sun is shining. It's so beautiful. It's a great day to take a walk, isn't it? Yes, it is. I had such a good Memorial Day weekend. Crocheting. Diamond painting. It was just nice. Last night I worked on my temperature blanket. Yep. I got that thing out. I did, I did. Yes, I did. So, we can do this day in history. Okay. 
that's fine. This day in history. History. Do, 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 do. I haven't done that today. Do, 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 do. History. Listen, uh, going back to the pen pal thing. No prison, people. <laughs> I was watching Orange is the New Black. So weird. I think I'm through episode three. <sighs> what a crazy show. It's like you just can't even believe it. So no prison pen pals, all right? No. <laughs> okay. So this day in history, and I'm trying to kind of stick to the crime theme. June 1st, 2004, opening statements in the Scott Peterson trial. Now, I don't, I remember this, but I, I didn't realize it was that many years ago. 2004, it's been 17 years. Wow. I might have done the math wrong on that, but it seems like it just happened the other day. Anyway, the opening statements uh, begin in Scott Peterson's trial. He's accused of murdering his pregnant wife, Lacey Peterson, on Christmas Eve 2002. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, that was the trial that was 17 years ago. So 18, 19 years ago, this happened. So their baby would be an adult now. Wow. Oh, my God. Anyway. Um, this case captivated everyone. Um, she goes missing. He says the last time she was seen was walking the dog. And he will, he left to go on a fishing trip. Sure, he did. She's never seen again. Um, sh so, he, you know, he's crying to the TV reporters, you know, find my wife. And everybody's sympathizing with him. And, you know, um until about a month later when a woman by the name of Amber Fry comes forward and says, oh, we've been having an affair. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so now the police are really, they're looking at him. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean you're having an affair? So, and then shortly after that, the bodies wash up or the body. Um, so, um, and then Scott Peterson sells the sport, his sport, his wife's sport utility vehicle. And they think it was, um, to try to get rid of the evidence. So they want, they, they go to arrest this guy and he, they find him in the airport. He's changed his hair color. He's wearing glasses. He's carrying his brother's passport. <laughs> Clearly attempting to flee um, so he's arrested and he's put on trial so, and he hires a pretty well-known attorney Mark Garagos um, so <laughs> he goes on trial for this and of course his defense <laughs> is a very clever one uh, he was framed framed Someone watching, you know, knew all of the circumstances of her death and made it look like he did it. What? <laughs> okay. Well, the jury didn't buy that one. He was convicted. Um, sentenced to um, the death penalty. But then that was overturned and he is now spending life in prison without the possibility of parole. So, yeah, as it should be. Yeah. So sad. Why didn't he just divorce her? You know, wouldn't that have been easier? I don't know. Men and their guilt. Wow. But the trial lasted 19 weeks. 19 weeks. That's crazy. 174 witnesses. Hundreds of pieces of evidence what i'm glad i didn't cover that trial holy moly 19 weeks yeah no thanks okay guys time to get a step in get a step in yep all right guys i gotta get to work um 
yeah, it's that time of day. Have a great day. It's, I feel like Monday, but it's not. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Monday was a holiday. <laughs> Have a great day. Good luck with your steps. Um, I love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the morning show. Bye, everybody.